This is the Jason Walker Show. Two-time National Sports Media Association Montana Sportscaster of the Year and three-time loser, the Jason Walker Show. The best local and statewide sports coverage featuring the biggest guests from Montana. Flint Rasmussen uh, joining us here on the Jason Walker Show. He's freaking exhausting, too. You used to dance a lot more. Yeah, I know, lady. I'm 51 years old now. The NAI Hall of Famer Mike Van Deese joining us here Jason Walker Show. And is it just a deal where quarterbacks have to be good golfers? Well, that's all they have time for. They don't work out. They don't lift weights. <laughs> they don't do anything else. They might as well go get on the golf course and at least have some fun. And from across the country. Doug Gottlieb, our guest here on the Jason Walker Show. End of the day, remember, it, it's your show. It's got your name on it. Howie Mandel, our guest here. Jason Walker, deal or no deal? The Jason Walker Show, presented by Helena Accommodations. The in-town five-star extended stay residences. Visit HelenaAccommodations.com. Broadcasting from the Major Mortgage Man Cave, here's Jason Walker. Yo, happy Thursday. The Jason Walker Show coming to you live on the Facebook.com slash the Jason Walker Show. It is also on YouTube. Just search the Jason Walker Show. It's also on Podbean, Network One Sports, TreasureStateRadio.com. All live and happening now. Big show today. Cannot wait to get started. We're going to talk to Mark Adams. He used to coach at Rocky Mountain College back in the 80s against Kelvin Sampson when Adams was at Rocky and Sampson was at Tech. Now he's an ESPN college basketball analyst, and he'll join us coming up to talk about uh, the world of sports at this moment. He also has a new book out. Looking forward to reading it. And coming up in about uh, 40 minutes or so, the first interview that I think anybody's done with Jesse Davis. How's he recovering from his injury, which was, what, about 50 days ago? When does he get to go home? You'll find out. And a whole lot more coming up on a Thursday. Tomorrow, big show as well, so can't wait to, to get going there. Um, we are having a little bit of internet issues, so you'll have to just bear with us. But uh, we will get everything uh, perfect before, uh, the, uh, before the end of everything. All right, let's start with what's going on. We have On This Day in History coming up too. But uh, let's uh, – more cancellations. The longest-running PBR event in Billings has been canceled, which is brutal. Uh, PBR announced today that the April 17th through the 19th event, the Billings Invitational at Metro Park, uh, was canceled. Um, saying because, quote, in light of U.S. and global health authority guidelines regarding COVID-19, end quote. Uh, adding that they are, you know, tickets are refundable. Um all of that, but it ends a streak of 24 consecutive PBRs in the Magic City. And it's tough, th this world we're living in. Um, you know, and this is really, we, we talk a lot about how it affects the world of sports, but, you know, losing the PBR is big for Billings. Let's just look at what Billings is losing now in the last couple of weeks slash move, moving forward. And like I said, it's rough. It's, it's, it's just crazy how much we're losing. I mean, Billings is, has lost it, it, the, the rest of the state A from last week. The NAI women's tournament, which was supposed to start yesterday, supposed to be in uh, the second day of round one today, um, share concert, which was scheduled for April 26, which was the week after PBR is now moved to October. At least that was able to get rescheduled. I guess I'd rather have the PBR rescheduled than share, but Hey, whatever. Uh, the Montana open youth wrestling tournament for this week, uh, for next weekend also has been canceled. And that is a fantastic event, but you know, you look at, at, where they're moving, you know, it's it, what they're losing. It's tough. 
PBR also announcing cancellations in Sioux Falls and Albuquerque. A lot of Velocity Tour events canceled as well and and postponed. Um, it's just the world we live in right now, and it's crazy. And, you know, it's not going to get any easier anytime soon. So, you know, we're just where we're at, basically. Uh, let's see, what else is going on? Uh, Mike Person, Glenn Dive. Red Devil and also former Montana State University Bobcat started in the Super Bowl, offensive lineman for the San Francisco 49ers. He was cut today. And uh, Adam Schefter first reported it, but yeah, it's um, hopefully he'll, he'll hook on somewhere else. Started 33 games the last couple of years for the 49ers, including the Super Bowl last month. And uh, hopefully he, uh, like I said, gets hooked up somewhere else because he's a what, nine-year vet. He's been very, very consistent. And uh, best of luck to Mike moving forward. All right, let's move on to some other stuff. The NAI. This is big news. The NAIA, according to a report that came out yesterday or the day before is going to consider legislation that will allow name image and likeness legislation that will essentially allow unlimited outside compensation for athletes based on their fame in the NAI. Uh, According to the report from CBS sports.com schools in the small college organization that includes Carroll, Rocky tech, Western Northern just in Montana Uh, Recently received proposed legislation that removes the word reasonable from previous NAI rules that allowed athletes, quote, reasonable compensation for use of name, image, and likeness, end quote. Now, President and CEO Jim Carr said it would be difficult uh, for the organization to, quote, determine what's reasonable and what's not going forward. Uh, So these athletes in the NAI could earn some outside compensation, which is a lot different than NAI or NCAA. And we, yeah, we're aware of the internet issues, and there's a lot of internet going on more so now than there has been. You got all these students and teachers working from home, bless their hearts. So uh, internet <laughs> has been cranked up a little bit, but we're, we're, we're working on it. Just bear with us. All right, we're doing what we can to, uh, to keep going. But uh, you go to the NAI, back to this. Um, the NCAA is wanting to maybe do something, but the NAI legislation, similar to the California law, that is uh, set to go into effect in three years in 2023. So limited restrictions and then allowing athletes to have an agent. Now, if this measure passes... The NAI would be the first college organization to allow athletes to earn money from outside entities based on their notoriety. That includes compensation for radio or TV programs, which is, uh, is interesting. Uh, President Carr was asked whether the NAI might be a template for the NCAA, and he said maybe the people outside the NAI will pay attention. Quote, whether it will influence others, I'm not really sure. They're facing some different issues and challenges than we are Anyway, end quote. So, it's interesting to keep an eye on this. The NAI has already made concessions in its amateur code. Uh, Central Methodist University defensive back Tony Harris, the first female scholarship position player in college football, has been a part of two Super Bowl commercials and has professional representation from an agent in the United Kingdom. She already gets money. So we'll keep an eye on this moving forward because it's very interesting. The NAI legislation was to be voted on in Kansas City April 1st, but because of COVID-19, that meeting probably will take place online. Now, this legislation needs to be passed by a simple majority of delegates representing 251 schools. So there you go. Um, You know, we talked about the PBR being the longest-running 
event in a in a, in Billings for the the PBR Billings was the longest running PBR event. Well, the NAI by canceling this weekend's or this week's NAI tournament in Kansas City, uh, the nation's longest continuously running basketball tournament came to an end. How crazy is that? Because there's no tournament. It started in 1937, two years before the NCAA. So it went NAI in 37, the NIT in 38, and then 1939, the NCAA tournament began. How about that? It's a fantastic tournament, and hopefully it's back next year. And granted, it's going to be in a much different capacity. But like I said, stay uh, bear with us dealing with some internet issues, but uh, aren't we all? And if that's the, the minor part of our issue for today, then we'll be all right. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to be joined by a college basketball analyst, former Rocky Mountain College basketball coach, Mark Adams, will join us. He's got a new book coming out, and I want to talk to him, too, about college basketball and what's next as we move forward is uncharted territory here. Nobody's been dealing with this ever, and we'll figure out maybe how we can with Mark Adams next. Jason Walker Show. Stay with us. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Yes, it's true that Montana is a long way from the Gulf Coast, but you can bring that Cajun flavor home with a stop at Cafe Zydeco. From po' boys to classic sandwiches, Cafe Zydeco has all the best Cajun in town. Are you in the mood for seafood gumbo or crawfish etouffee? Maybe you're craving jambalaya with some shrimp and grits. Head in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or call ahead for pickup or delivery. Cafe Zydeco will fix all your southern cravings, even on a chilly Montana day. Cafe Zydeco is a proud sponsor of the Jason Walker Show. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918. Or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122, equal housing lender. Spring is fast approaching and summer is just around the corner. So now is the time to get those windows tinted at Auto Concepts as the sun starts to heat up. Tinting is the best way to keep the sun out of your little one's eyes driving down the road. Plus, it just looks cool. Auto Concepts is your exclusive 3M dealer for tinting as well as the best clear bras in town. Auto Concepts clear bras will not fade or yellow over time. And don't forget about suspension lifts and power steps for your rig too. Visit AutoConceptsHelena.com or check them out out on Facebook. Auto Concepts, the auto enhancement professionals. Everyone knows about Dinners Done Right and the convenience of the cook and carry cuisines. It's so easy to just stop by and you have something for dinner that night. But there's also one more thing you need to know about. Dinners Done Right grab and go salad bar. Yes, I said salad bar. Always the freshest ingredients along with a daily soup and nacho bar too. So the next time you are in a rush or you just want to eat healthy, stop by Dinners Done Right for the soup, salad, and nacho bar. For monthly menus and more info, it's dinnersdoneright.com. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rockers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rockers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rockers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. All right. <laughs> Welcome back, Jason Walker Show, Major Mortgage Man Cave. Uh, not sure what happened to our music. It's kind of one of those days, it seems like. It seems like it's a Monday right now. 
as we are uh, dealing with internet issues. We're dealing with a whole lot of stuff. And uh, bear with us if you're watching on Facebook. I promise we'll be fine. Um, we just have to get, get through it. And, um, you know, like I said, there's a lot more people online right now because of uh, all the teaching at home. And so we're, we're dealing with uh, a lot of stuff that we're not used to, right? Although we're used to dealing with internet issues because that happens all the time, especially here in Montana because we're still considered rural, um, I guess. Anyway, uh, still to come here in about a, oh, I don't know, half hour or so, Jesse Davis will join us. And I believe it is his first interview since being released from the hospital. And I think it's his first interview at all since being injured in a uh, horrific accident down in Utah um, about 50 days ago or so. And uh, he will join us coming up in about a half an hour. So you'll want to stick around for that. His uh, injury, how much does he remember from the accident? And what's his rehab like, not just physically, but mentally, as you, as you work back from uh, a, a tough injury like that. Uh, set to have Mark Adams join us, um, waiting, uh, we're efforting to get him on, and uh, hopefully he uh, gets back to us. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, but New Orleans Saints head coach Sean Payton tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, his results came out today. He started feeling sick Sunday, took a test Monday. Um, he's in uh, obviously quarantine and he's trying to stay away from people and he's, he's tired, but he doesn't have the cough or the fever, but he does have COVID-19. So they believe he's the first NFL person to, to get the COVID-19. Uh, of course, lots in the NBA and I haven't heard of any from the NHL yet. We did get good news yesterday from MSUB, and that is the two players that were being tested for the softball team tested negative. So that's a great positive as well. So um, there you go. Uh, we know that the Frontier yesterday canceled its spring sports season, the NCAA, the NAI. I mean, they're all just cancellations, and we're, yet we're still waiting for Montana High School Association because they think – uh, by April 13th, that they'll be able to get their sports seasons in, and they're just delaying the inevitable, so we're just going to keep hammering on them until they actually uh, come to their senses and uh, cancel the season. Now, I'm not advocating for the end of the season just to be a jerk. I'm advocating because that's what literally everybody else is doing is canceling. And you're delaying the inevitable. You're giving these kids hope. I love high school sports. That's the majority of what we talk about here on the Jason Walker Show is high school activities and high school sports. But when you have an entity that is not being the smartest, in my opinion, I'm going to call them out on it. And I don't think they should have continued through Friday, the, uh, the uh, MHSA state tournaments. I think they either should have canceled on Wednesday night or on Thursday immediately once they found out that literally everybody else was canceling. I don't know what they thought because there were no confirmed cases in the state of Montana, but as we are finding out, it was already here. And we're going to find out who is sick moving forward at those tournaments. But what do I know? I'm just a talk show host, so I don't know much. It's amazing to see how many people do have, on, on social media, have doctor's degrees, though. I didn't realize how many friends of mine were MDs. It's, um, it just, it's amazing. It really is. I had no idea. But what do, you know, like I said, what do I know? Uh, MHSA uh, knows a lot more than a bunch of doctors and NCAA and NAI people, too. So, hey, there you go. And I get it. I've lost, I've lost followers and friends on Facebook and Twitter over the last week because of my thoughts. And like I said last week, I can have my opinion, you can have yours, but apparently mine can only fit yours. So what if we're both wrong? And what if we're both right? Why can't we all just get along, right? Um, we do have On This Day in History coming up. 
So we'll get to that. There's a lot that happened on this day in history. Uh, still trying to effort uh, Mark Adams, the former Rocky coach and current ESPN college basketball analyst. So we know this has affected a lot of different stuff, sports-wise. I did see online today, though, that I think it was in Washington, the, the, the places that are safe to hang out that you don't have to worry about, um, golf courses. So a great idea, go out to Green Meadow Country Club, get signed up, tell them you heard it or saw it on the Jason Walker Show, become a member, and, you know, as long as, because you can't golf with more than five in a, in a group, so we're okay to get it. We get in under that 10, right? Uh, I think we, you should become a member. And not just for a multitude. I mean, there's tons of reasons. You get unbelievable food, okay? The, the lounge slash um, dining room area are separate. So if you want to watch sports, you can. If you want a quiet meal, you can. There are so many different activities that go on. And now, right now, things are being pushed back, like karaoke, which was scheduled for next week. But they'll have it again. And you and your family, once the weather warms up after Memorial Day, are going to love the pool. And like I, I've said, you can go with me golfing while the family and kids hang out at the pool. Or we can hang out at the pool and with the kids and let the others go golf. I mean, it's just, it's cool. It's a great place to be. Friendly staff, and everybody knows your name. It's fantastic. Green Meadow Country Club. Go out there, tell them you saw it on the Jason Walker Show, and we uh, will become friends, okay? Uh, getting a call. Looks like this will be uh, Mark Adams as we welcome Mr. Adams onto the Jason Walker Show, Mike Miller uh, State Farm Hotline. How are you, sir? Oh, let me switch it over to the board. It's almost like I forgot I know what I'm doing or how to do it. Mark Adams, how are you? Good, good. I'm sorry I'm late. No worries, no worries. Um, appreciate you joining us on a, a, a weird kind of time frame. When you and I spoke for the first time, it was about a year ago. We were in Billings. You were speaking uh, at the Tuesday yeah. night before the, before the tournament started. And, man, what a difference a year has made. You know, it really has. And, of course, uh, it's changed all over the country, you know, and, and just really day by day things change dramatically. And you just got to gotta be, you know, be able to adjust, I guess. You Were you at, with the tournament at the time or when, when everything canceled with the American Athletic Conference or was your tournament over? No, I was, I was down in Fort Worth. And flew down there on Wednesday morning. I mean, just think about how much one week makes a difference. And so I was down there, uh, ready to go, had all my game notes ready. And all of a sudden we heard that, you know, we knew that the Ivy League had canceled their tournament. And then the governor of Ohio had basically said, there's going to be no fans at the Cleveland NCAA site or at the first four in Dayton. And that's really when the dominoes started falling really fast. And then by Thursday morning, we were literally hours before going on air and you know, that then it was announced that the American tournament had been canceled along with many others. It just amazes me over the course of about 48 hours, how quickly everything happened. And, you know, we knew about the Ivy league and everybody was overreacting and like, or thought we were overreacting. And then all right. of a sudden, literally every conference cancels and then NAI tournaments are canceled. And then the NCAA March madness. I mean, I, nobody ever thought that would happen, but it just it blows my mind at how quickly it all all happened. Have you had a chance to sit back and, and, and think, wow, I mean, where we were Tuesday from last week to Thursday of this week, how fast it went? Uh, yes, I have, as a matter of fact. <laughs> it, it, it feels like a day and it feels like six months all at the same time. You know, it, it's one of those things where, when I sat there in Fort Worth and realized how dangerous things were, and, and, and I don't usually use those words, and, and I don't think I'm overreacting here. I mean, it is, it's a dangerous situation for a lot of people, and, and including me, you know, and everybody else out there. Um, 
but but I really thought when the Ivy League decided to do that, you know, right away my antennas went off because these are the smartest people in the world. Yeah, you know, I mean, and, and I felt like you know they must know something that I don't, which is which is the norm for people in the Ivy League versus me. And but that that really got my attention at that point. And then you know there was some backlash on that. People were saying. Like when the American canceled and people were disappointed, and there was there was some back, some short term backlash from that, and I started thinking about my mom, who's who's eighty nine years old, and I thought, you know what, if if this is the sacrifice we need to make to protect the greatest generation, then I'm all in, and then it was just a matter of trying to get home, you know. Uh, so we were at dinner. Uh, my me and my ESPN colleagues were all at dinner on Wednesday night, and nobody's in the restaurant, but we had to go eat somewhere, right? Right. And, so there's about, there's about a dozen of us. And so we started thinking in terms of, okay, if this thing is canceled, because right then we got the word about Rudy Gobert on Wednesday night. And then the NBA shut down, you know, their season. And so we, we suspect, strongly suspected that the games were going to be canceled at some point. And lo and behold, you know, we started thinking in terms of, okay, where do all of us live? And so Adam Amin, the very talented play-by-play guy, you know, at ESPN, he does a lot of big games. And, yeah. and he was there at dinner that night, good friend of mine. And he goes, well, Mark, you live in Cincinnati, I live in Chicago, we'll carpool together, you know? And everybody at the table made arrangements for that in case we couldn't get flights home. Wow. Well, we, we obviously, we did get flights home, but that was another experience, just getting home. Because, uh, you know, there's people around you and, and how people make their decisions to get on an airplane at that point in time, you know, hacking away and everything else, I have no idea. But that was also alarming to me. So, and then to today, you know, we're uh, basically me and my family, we're, we're just hunkering down. You know, that's the way it is. And again, if that's what it means to save people from the greatest generation, I'm all in. Absolutely. Mark Adams joining us, former Rocky Mountain College coach, also ESPN college basketball analyst. And before we talk about your book, uh, which uh, it sounds very interesting, um, how long do you think this is going to go, Mark? Because I don't think any of us really have an idea. No, we don't, you know, and, and I think we've got to be creative now. I mean, I, I work, my other full-time job is in the, is in the technology sector. Uh, I sell software testing and things like that. And, you know, now the, there's a new normal, right? And, and if the, the quicker that we can understand the new normal and then, and then act accordingly with the new normal, then, that's going to help everybody uh, financially, personally, psychologically, you know, in every way. And, you know, I see things going on now in the technology sector that where people are really working hard to connect. I mean, major companies that are sending their, their, their employees home and, you know, already have built in ways to connect with the organization, you know, and then there's the video conferencing, which I've done more of those in the last three or four days than I've done probably in the last 10 years. And so I don't know how long it's going to last, but I know this, I better change. You know, I better understand, try to educate myself the best that I can. And then I need to understand how can I adapt and how, how can we work together in a different format to adapt and still, still build the right type of culture, even though you're only connected electronically. And, and so those are some things that I'm doing in order to, to help myself and my family and our our business teams to, to be successful during this this uh, you know radical downturn because there's a lot of people losing their jobs and believe me I'm aware of that and it could happen to me and everybody else as well. Mark Adams joining us, Mike Miller, State Farm Hotline. You mentioned your mom who's 89 and everybody's been talking about this the the elderly high risk. Well, it's your niece too that you have to worry about too, and Marissa Van Atta down at Rocky. And how, you know, she's immuno, immunocompromised as well. Um, it's not just the elderly. It's young, youngsters yeah. as well. I mean, and yeah. that's scary. Well, and, and the other thing is, too, you know, we all have the, the, op- the opportunity is the wrong word. But, you know, we, we all can carry the virus to someone else. And that's why it's so important for people to take it seriously and not go to bars and restaurants. And listen, my, my oldest son. Uh, his business is all around bars and restaurants. And today had to lay off 60 people because in Ohio, they've shut everything down with bars and restaurants. You know, the good news is Marissa, I mean, she's not compromised now. She's, she's back to full health and, and has, uh, you know, really just 
just tremendous bounce back. And, yeah. But if I worry about her and everybody else, you know, it's just one of those things where, but if we, if we're smart, we use common sense things. Uh, this isn't rocket science. If you, if you stay, stay away, you know, from other people right now, if you wash your hands on a regular basis, you know, Lysol takes care of it. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things we can do. I mean, just around our own homes and we're, believe me, at the Adams home, we're practicing every one of them. I, I still have a 14 year old son too that, you know, wanted to play baseball, but that's, that's canceled right now. Mm-hmm. So we work out in the backyard. We still practice, you know, we do those things. So in some ways it's been good for me to even reconnect with my own family. And I think I talked to Mitch Stroman, the play-by-play announcer at Northern Arizona about this last week. And he said that too. Yeah. It's, you go back to like the fifties now and we actually get to have dinner conversations. We're not worried about, Oh, I got to be done so I can watch this game or I can get to the here. Yeah. Now we get to hang out with our families again, and I think that's going to be the best thing maybe that comes out of this whole deal. Yeah, and, and you know, the other thing is, too, I mean, I'm, I'm so grateful uh, to ESPN. I mean, the way that they handled everything with us, um, you know, there's no punitive type of, of damage with us not doing games and that type of thing. And, you know, it's such a first-class organization, and I'm grateful for that. And then I am grateful for the time. That, that I can be home. Now, I have an office in my backyard where I typically work anyway, so I've really got a very, very unique, and, and, and I cherish that situation. But to spend time with my son, Rob, like that, and like today, you know, I took lunch break, and we went out to the garage. It was raining, but, you know, we were able to stand in the garage. I put up the hitting net, and, and we hit some baseballs, nice. you know, and, and we're doing that literally every single day because someday that kid's going to play baseball again. That's his love. And right now the season – is not going to take place. And we've had that conversation, but that doesn't mean that a father and son can't have some fun together. And that's the way we've looked at it. That's fantastic. Mark Adams, our guest here. All right, uh, let's chat about this book. And I didn't know you had written one until we were messaging back and forth, but it's called The Coach <laughs> and the Geek. Um, what's it about? I mean, I'd love to, uh, to, ch- to check this book out. Well, thanks so much for having me on. And, and you know, it is nice to to get to talk about it. I've never written a fiction before. I've, I've written some other books, very short, kind of based on some short stories. All of them were factual though. And so I'm driving down the highway one day with actually the, the gentleman that owns Lighthouse Technologies, our software testing company, is a dear friend of mine. And he started asking me about how did you keep teams, hold teams accountable when you weren't very good? He said like your first year at Rocky, you know, I'm sure you weren't very good or your first year at Western Oregon or Central Connecticut. And I, and he said, how did you hold them accountable when you knew you weren't going to win as many games as you were the next year or the year after that? And I told him about a strategy that I had developed throughout my coaching career called a career best effort strategy. And it revolved around doing simple things that require concentration and effort, but really no talent. And an example in basketball would be like, if, if I were guarding you and you put up a shot, I have to make physical contact. You know, I've got to block you off before I go retrieve the ball. It doesn't take any talent to do that, just concentration effort. And we broke that down from a basketball perspective, but we also did things off the floor, things like uh, holding yourself accountable to attend class every day, holding yourself accountable to ask two questions in class each day, holding yourself accountable to compliment a classmate who, who asked a good question in, in class or, or participated in a certain way that you reached out to them. Therefore, you're, you're, you're spreading you know, your network a little bit, uh, even within your, your campus community. And these were things that I sat down with my players every single Monday, and, and we charted it, and we went through it. So it wasn't just on the floor, but it was off the floor for success. And what I found was it created an accountability culture that was based upon better communication. And so I started writing this fictional story about this coach who takes over a program at Bozeman Tech believe it or not. That's the name of the college. <laughs> Bozeman Tech. And he's 0-3. He's in the third season. His athletic director can't stand him. He can't stand his athletic director. And he realizes that, that he's really created the wrong kind of culture, that he's, he's suffering from the disease of me. And he needs to create a culture of we, but he doesn't know how to do it. And through fate, he meets a software engineer. And the software engineer who's, who's very good at processes and at, at creating assessments and evaluating businesses, they align their talents, radically different talents, and they, they work together to create a different culture based upon better communication, better use of technology, better understanding of accountability, and, and, ha- and how to communicate those goals in a, in, a, in a more understandable format. And they go through a season together. I won't tell you how it ends. 
but I think it's a it's a, a, a great read. It's out on Amazon.com, and the the title of the book is "The Coach and the Geek: Building a Kick Butt Culture" by Mark Adams and Jeff Van Fleet. And obviously, you know, I'm I'm the coach and he's the geek, and it's out there right now. It's seventeen ninety five on Amazon.com. Kindle, I think, is nine ninety five. And I hope people will take time to really, especially during this time, uh, every chapter, it's 170 pages, it's a quick read, and every chapter has a lessons learned from every single chapter that can apply to your personal life or your professional and business life. And I really hope you know some of my friends and, and billings around the state of Montana will take some time to, to take a look at the Bozeman Tech team. And, and you know, it's based a little bit on some of the stuff I did at Rocky, by the way. So uh, while it's fiction, there are definitely some true true parts of the story. And, and uh, I think people will recognize some of that as well and have some fun with it. Well, let me ask you a final question. How would you as a coach have handled the cancellation of a tournament uh, going in as a three seed, a four seed, or a five seed, whatever it was. And with some seniors that on, on that team that are never going to play again. And then the under, you know, everybody's talking about seniors, but the underclassmen, their season yeah. ended too. I and mean, how would you have handled that as a coach? Well, I, I think I would have handled like any other human you know there would have been the initial disappointment i mean obviously that's a hard message to carry on uh to a bunch of guys and gals that have, have worked so hard you know i think back to a year ago when we when we first met and first talked and and how special the the women's national nai basketball tournament was in billings and i got to look in their eyes and see how excited they were to play in their some case their first national tournament and i remember that feeling as a coach as well and, and now obviously that's going to be denied and listen, I was very disappointed. You know, I worked very, very hard throughout this season. I had the great honor of calling the Big Ten championship game before everything was shut down. I did the Wisconsin at Indiana game for the big – I mean, think about that. that that's a, yeah. a, an amazing opportunity, and, and I didn't take it for granted. And then I've got, you know, two games, four games over two days where I'm prepared. I've got my graphics built. i got all my great game notes done. You know, I'm, the whole thing, I'm ready to go. And literally within hours of tip off, I got a text from a, t- a radio station in Tennessee where I was supposed to do an interview that told me the tournament was canceled, you know, and, and so that was disappointment. However, I really started thinking in terms of, okay, they've canceled these tournaments for a reason. And the reason is human life. And is there any game that's more important than even saving one human life? And, and I did think of my mother and my father who passed away you know, over six years ago. And would I sacrifice those four games? Would I sacrifice the national tournament as a coach and as a player to, to help save at that time, you know, the greatest generation, the people who, who have been more commonly dying from this virus? And the answer was an emphatic yes. And that would be the message that I would share with my team. Once the, once the dust settled a little bit and I could put things into context, that's how I would have explained it, that it's about their parents and their grandparents and that while we all missed the game and we're all sad that we won't get to finish together, but look what we've accomplished. Let's celebrate what we have. And more importantly, let's, let's celebrate our, our loved ones that we still have in our lives and we want to keep them there for a long, long time. That's how I would handle it. That's fantastic. Um, I, don't, I don't know if there's a better way to say it than that. Mark Adams, uh, ESPN College basketball analyst, author of The Coach and the Geek, Building a Kick-Butt Culture. It's on Amazon.com. Uh, we appreciate you joining us and uh, looking forward to uh, chatting down the road next year when we actually get real basketball back. Uh, my pleasure. Anytime, give me a call. And again, I'm sorry I was a little bit late no, getting no, no. to you. No worries, my man. Appreciate it and uh, take care. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. That is Mark Adams joining us. He used to coach at Rocky Mountain College back in the 80s. Coach against Calvin Sampson. But I'm interested in reading this book. I'm going to tell the wife to order it. The Coach and the Geek, Building a Kick-Butt Culture. And uh, looking forward to uh, to reading that from Mark Adams. All right. Uh, Jesse Davis is going to join us when we return here on the Jason Walker Show. Looking forward to chatting with him. I believe it's an exclusive. His first interview since being released from the hospital. And uh, more than a month and a half after a, a very almost deadly accident. We'll talk to Jesse when we come back. Don't forget, by the way, support for the Jason Walker Show comes in part from Manscaped. And we've been talking about Manscaped for a while, and they're fantastic. And here's why. Guys, you're going to want to be trimmed up, all right? Because the quarantines, the 
lack of you know, social distancing, it's all going to end at some point. So you're going to want to look your best, head to toe. And that includes Manscaped, okay? Advanced Skin Safe Technology, the Lawnmower 3.0 with the, uh, it, it's unbelievable. It's the same replacement blade that in the 2.0. But now it's a 3.0, and it's premium. Why? Well, the battery lasts up to 90 minutes. You can take a longer shave. You can do it in the shower. The LED light, which illuminates grooming areas for a closer, more precise trim. They've also upgraded to a 7,000 RPM motor with quiet stroke technology. Show that mower off loud and proud. It's got a rapid charging dock powered by USB. If you're listening to me right now, this is, you're one of the first to hear about this, and I want you to experience it firsthand for yourself. Get 20% off and free shipping. Use the code WALKER20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off, free shipping, the code WALKER20 at manscaped.com. You want a little bit of a visual? This is what, and, and okay, people, the, I'm using fruit or vegetables as an example here, so don't freak out. But this is the before picture of Manscaped. And then once you get the Lawnmower 3.0, this is the after picture. Where is it? Get, where is it? Come on. There we go. So that, I'm telling you, 20% off, free shipping, manscaped.com. Use the code WALKER20, W-A-L-K-E-R-2-0. We're coming right back. Jesse Davis will join us at last segment, brought to you by Rutgers Furniture. We're back with the PRCA legend next. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rutgers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rutgers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Everyone knows about Dinners Done Right and the convenience of the cook and carry cuisines. It's so easy to just stop by and you have something for dinner that night. But there's also one more thing you need to know about. Dinners Done Right Grab and Go Salad Bar. Yes, I said salad bar. Always the freshest ingredients along with a daily soup and nacho bar too. So the next time you are in a rush or you just want to eat healthy, stop by Dinners Done Right for the soup, salad, and nacho bar. For monthly menus and more info, it's dinnersdoneright.com. Spring is fast approaching and summer is just around the corner. So now is the time to get those windows tinted at Auto Concepts as the sun starts to heat up. Tinting is the best way to keep the sun out of your little one's eyes driving down the road. Plus, it just looks cool. Auto Concepts is your exclusive 3M dealer for tinting as well as the best clear bras in town. Auto Concepts clear bras will not fade or yellow over time. And don't forget about suspension lifts and power steps for your rig too. Visit autoconceptshelena.com or check them out on Facebook. Auto Concepts, the auto enhancement professionals. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm Agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918, or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122, equal housing lender. Yes, it's true that Montana is a long way from the Gulf Coast, but you can bring that Cajun flavor home with a stop at Cafe Zydeco. From po' boys to classic sandwiches, Cafe Zynico has all the best Cajun in town. Are you in the mood for seafood gumbo or crawfish etouffee? Maybe you're craving jambalaya with some shrimp and grits. Head in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or call ahead for pickup or delivery. Cafe Zydeco will fix all your southern cravings, even on a chilly Montana day. Cafe Zydeco is a proud sponsor of the Jason Walker Show.
Welcome back to the Jason Walker Show. Welcome back. Final segment on a Thursday, Jason Walker Show. Big show tomorrow. We're going to talk to Barry Abrams. He is uh, the host of In the Gate podcast, covers horse racing for ESPN. You're going to get his thoughts on the move of the Kentucky Derby from May 5th to September 5th. And will it work? And are, what are they doing for the other Triple Crown races? So we'll talk to Barry Abrams tomorrow. And Flint Rasmussen will join us. PBR canceling Billings, a couple other events moving forward. And we'll get his uh, thoughts on that and how weird it was to work in an empty arena last week in, uh, where were they? Uh, just upside uh, Duluth, Georgia, just outside of Atlanta. All right. Uh, make sure the snow is melting here in Helena or wherever you're at. Get on the schedule now for lawn, pest, and tree needs at Nitro Green. NitroGreenHelena.com. They'll take care of you. 443-5088. They will fertilize your yawn or your lawn. Maybe your yawn too. I don't know, but definitely your lawn. And then they will also take care of the pests like spiders, bugs, insects, all that stuff, hornets, wasps, whatever. Uh, get on the schedule now. NitroGreenHelena.com. All right. Uh, on this day in history, still to come and the walk off, but uh, it was about. Oh, I don't know, a little over a month and a half ago that we first got the news that our good friend uh, Jesse Davis had been hurt in a in, in, in a rodeo accident down in Utah. And we've been getting updates from his wife, Cassidy, on both Instagram and Facebook. And um, he was released from the hospital. He's undergone a whole bunch of surgeries. He's got more scheduled, but he's able to leave the hospital the other day and joining us. I think it's his first interview since being released, since being injured. And Jesse Davis joins us now here on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. All right, Jesse. So uh, we were just talking, but you're getting finally to get out of Utah. I don't, I bet you're happy to, to find for multitude of reasons, but you get to come yeah. back to Montana. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, pretty excited. We just got done saying goodbye to my parents and uh, like a lot of my family down here and stuff. And, uh, but I've been here for so long. I, I was like, told my wife, I'm like, holy cow, it kind of got a little hard to leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are from that area, so yeah, I'm sure it's very hard to, yeah. to leave and seeing the folks and. But I bet you can't wait to get back home to the to the to the family and then obviously the little girls too. Yeah, for sure they're waiting patiently for us to get back home. Well, I just saw <laughs> them a couple of weeks ago at a birthday party, and you know they're they're growing and they're they they're doing well. But yeah, they're going to be happy to have daddy home. I'm sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they <laughs> imagine they probably grow three inches since that scene. <laughs> <laughs> Possi probably, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Jesse Davis joining us here. Um, I guess the big question is, how you feeling, my man, after everything that's gone on over the last, I guess, what, 45 days or so? Uh, pretty good. I feel like I'm about, you know, 50, 60% back to, to normal. I still got a, a tube in me that's kind of sucking some of that junk out from uh, my liver. But um, I'm supposed to come back down here and about about three weeks and get that taken out and uh, little, uh, just minor checkup deal. So uh, hopefully in the next three weeks I can get to moving around a lot better. I can I can walk and, uh, and do about everything besides jumping jacks and stuff. <laughs> yeah, don't be but, jumping uh, up and down. Yeah, for sure. Hey, uh, do you do you remember the the accident or? Or, I mean, anything from what happened? Yeah, I remember uh, a horse coming back over on top of me. Like, I was um, making a ride, and then it, I was falling off the side, and kind of it looked, it kind of felt like I pulled him over on top of me. But uh, he might have just jumped on the side of me, too. But I remember going through the rack and then trying to get up, and I, I couldn't get up, and I knew exactly there was something – something going on inside of me that wasn't right at all, you know? 
Right. Yeah. I and mean, then it's... I remember, remember getting in the ambulance, and then that was about it. I mean, when you look at the video, have you seen the video? Have you looked at it, or is it just uh, too too much that you can't? I watched I watched it once, and that's about all I I wanted to watch. You know. Well, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it was yeah. Well, it was more like because I got bucked off. <laughs> Oh. So I didn't want to. I didn't want to put that negativity back in me. <laughs> well, yeah, for sure. Uh, Jesse Davis joining us here, uh, Jason Walker show. Um, obviously, you've had a lot of you know thoughts and prayers and, and well wishes from everybody in the not just the rodeo world, but that you know cares about you and the family. Um, mm-hmm. Did you get a lot of those messages while you were in the hospital? Oh yeah, I'm still. Uh... Trying to catch up on the phone and stuff, and my phone was been ringing off the hook, and and uh, you know everybody's so supportive and stuff, and especially my wife, not her phone was going going crazy too, and you know she had been with me the last fifty days through through thick and thin, and my mom and dad they were in there right beside me, and I mean I was so blessed to have all these people uh, saying, you know, wishing the best of luck and prayers and stuff. And I, you know, I, I, I don't know where to start to thank everybody, you know? Well, keeping up with Cassidy's, you know, Instagram and Facebook posts has kept all of us up to date on how you were doing. And it was a, you know, mm-hmm. it was a blessing to see the, the, results that, you know, get positive and more and more positive. How many surgeries have you had total? Uh, how many surgeries did I go through? Five. Five? Sorry. Wow. Yeah. Man. Yeah, I just had one. Yeah, I just had one on the 13th, uh, that skin graft, because my, uh, my wound had opened back up and that's why I kind of had to spend a little bit more time in the hospital at the, at the end of the healing deal. And so they, on the 13th, they did a skin graft on my belly. And now, uh, uh, here in, uh, probably, no, oh, probably six months or maybe I did surgery on my belly again. Gotcha. Um, Jesse, Jesse Davis joining us here in the Mike Miller state farm hotline. All right. The big question everybody wants to know is, well, aside from your feelings and how you're doing, but, um, last ride you're done. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty much done for, um, great career though. And obviously yeah. now you get to go back to the ranch. Um, I, I, I mean, this is just, it's a pleasure to talk with you. I'm just humbled right now because everything that, you know, I've known you for a few years and, and I got the chance to talk to Chase Erickson, one of your buddies. And, uh, he said he had a, an opportunity to speak with you as well. Um, how many of, right. how many other cowboys did you hear from over the last, you know, month and a half? Oh, it's hard to say. I, it seems like I've talked to everybody that I could think of at the time, but, and, and plus, you know, I had some old, some old, uh, cowboys come in there and visit me at the hospital and stuff that I hadn't seen since when I first started riding you know, professionally and stuff. So that was quite the deal too, is some of the old bull riders and stuff that I'd looked up to, they'd all stop in, and, uh, say hi and stuff. And some did, mo- you know, so much time in the hospital. So I was able to, catch up with some guys and stuff it's kind of an update on jesse davis joining us here jason walker show on on his way back home to montana finally and uh obviously you married the right woman because she has uh she's done a whole lot over the last month and a half to take care of you i joked with you the other day when we were texting and i said your wife slash manager but um yeah what a blessing to have cassidy by your side right that's for sure. Yeah, I'm one lucky guy. That's for sure. Like, uh, I couldn't. I could, I don't know what I'd do without her. For sure. Well, she is definitely an angel. Um, keeping track of uh, mm-hmm. of you, and you know, she's going to be. Uh, you know, she's always, I'm sure, been kind of a um, 
a stickler for things, but now she's really going to be on you, you know, to make sure you heal up properly. Right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Like you said, she's my manager, so she's <laughs> making sure, making sure whatever's going in my body is the right stuff. <laughs> no doubt. So that's a good thing. I always need to be, you know, a person always needs to be checked up every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, have you uh, have you talked to Jr. Vizane at all? Because you were you spent a little bit of time at the same rehab unit that he was at, and obviously much different injuries. But um, have you talked to him uh, at all about, you know, the process of, of getting better? No, I, uh, well, I just on Snapchat, I just, uh, we talked to each other uh, on just, uh, you know, keeping the, keeping the faith and keep looking forward and, you know, it's a long road. It can be a long road, but, uh, you know, I never, I never did talk to him over the, over the phone or anything. Gotcha. How, his, you know, like his situation was, mine was pretty bad, but his was permanent, you know? Sure. I yeah. was, I was fortunate enough to at least walk out of the hospital. Yeah, no doubt about that. Jesse mm-hmm. Davis, a couple of final questions. I know you're busy and, and it's a struggle at times, but how much of a process is this going to be? We know we have, you know, at least a couple more surgeries coming up, but how much longer uh, rehab did they tell you that this is going to be physically? Well, I, I got one for sure surgery, and then they said uh, that's not going to be very good because it's going to be going to be in the hospital for another four or five days. So, and I just got a checkup today, and they just told us today that I'm like, oh no, but it's going to, you know, it has to be done, so I can't. I can't try to bypass it by all means, but uh, hopefully, you know, everything keeps rolling and my body keeps keeping up like it has. And it should, you know, it should be back in the fighting shape in no time. <laughs> and then what about the mental <laughs> rehab? Because this isn't something that is easy to get over, I'm sure. That's right. That's what they were saying when I was leaving, the, getting ready to leave the hospital. They said it was, gonna mess with your brain and I'm like is that true but I've only had like one or two anxiety attacks like my chest was really hurting but that's about it the other than that I wake up every morning and think my lucky stars that I'm still alive and so that always helps me push forward mentally and physically so I you know I take advantage of every day that uh, comes around no question about that. I'm looking forward to seeing you at the, the different rodeos as we move forward. It'll be in a different capacity. And, you know, if I ever get into broadcasting rodeos, you can be my uh, my my color guy for me. You can be my Butch Knowles, and, and I'll be Jeff Metters. Yeah, you bet. Anytime I can do that. <laughs> Hey man, I appreciate it. I, I know that you're, uh, you got a long road ahead of you, but whatever we can do to help out and, and get the word out, we definitely want to. And, um, you know, we'll be staying in touch with you as we, uh, we get you a uh, 100% here, Jesse. Yeah, I appreciate it, Jason. Take care and uh, safe travels home and give those little girls big hugs when you see them. Will do. Thank you. All right. That is uh, Jesse Davis uh, joining us on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. It's not just a home or an auto. It's uh, it's not just a bundle or a combo. It, it, it's it's your home and auto, and Mike Miller understands that. Mike, uh, he knows what they mean to you, and he's here to help you give them the protection they deserve. Talk to State Farm agent Mike Miller and Helena today for your home and auto insurance. Great to hear from Jesse Davis. And, uh, I, I, and I know we've had some interruptions on YouTube and, and Facebook, this show will air in its entirety with no interruptions uh, coming up as soon as we get off the air here momentarily. So just wanted to let you know, if you missed anything, you can go to jasonwalkershow.com and rewatch. Uh, if you want to listen to Mark Adams or our interview with Jesse Davis. And it's so good to know that he's headed back home to Montana now. A um, little bit of a drive from uh, Spanish Fork, but heading home to uh to power and uh you know all the power with him and his family because uh, bless cassidy for her updates all over this last month and a half and bless jesse and and you know the whole family it's going to be great to get him home to montana 
All right, let's uh, let's do on this day in history because uh, that is where we're at. On this day in history is presented by the Motherlode Sports Bar, Casino, and Restaurant. The Motherlode Dinner's Done Right, Cafe Zydeco. All three of our great food sponsors. Make sure you call and order to go from all of them, and that includes the Motherlode Cafe Zydeco. Dinner's Done Right. Today, it is National Farm Rescuer Day. It is also National Let's Laugh Day, Certified Nurses Day, Chocolate Caramel Day, or Caramel, uh, Poultry Day. And in some areas, uh, some calendars, spring officially begins today. Others, it's tomorrow. Others, it's the 21st. So who actually knows? But uh, spring is starting soon. Uh, This date in 1915, the sixth summer modern Olympic Games, IOC President Pierre de Coubertin, wrote to uh, the media, indicated the 1916 Berlin Games would not take place because of World War I. I wonder if the 2020 Games in Tokyo will take place because of COVID-19. Uh, 1931, Nevada legalized gambling, but now all the casinos are closed for 30 days. 1938, Toronto Maple Leafs scored eight goals in five minutes. That's a lot. 1955, at the 17th NCAA Men's Basketball Championship, San Francisco beat LaSalle 77-63. Future Hall of Fame center Bill Russell named the outstanding player. Uh, 1956, uh, margin of victory in the NBA was the biggest at the times. The Minnesota Lakers, won, or Minneapolis Lakers, 133. St. Louis Hawks, 75. That's a lot. Um, 1960, the 22nd NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Ohio State beat Cal 75-55. Future Hall of Famer Jerry Lucas named outstanding player. In 1966, the 28th basketball championship, Texas Western beat Kentucky 72-65. First title in the first title game for the Miners. It was also under Coach Don Haskins. And that game's important because Coach Haskins started five black players in an NCAA championship game for the first time in history. It was immortalized in the movie Glory Road, with, I think it was a Josh Lucas. Anyway, great movie, but a better story for Texas Western, which is now Utah. 1972, the first AIAW women's basketball tournament took place. Immaculata beat Westchester State 52-48. That was the birth of NCAA women's basketball tournament. At the time, the AIAW. On this date in 1972, the Lakers beat the Golden State Warriors 162 to 99, by then a record 63. So LA is good at beating teams back in the day and well this year. 1987, Bonnie Blair skates a world record 500 meter 39.43 seconds and uh happy birthdays today. 1848, Wyatt Earp was born. A, uh, in Monmouth, Illinois. Died in 1929. Now, uh, 1864, happy birthday, Charles M. Russell. Charles Marion Russell, born on this date in 19, or 1864, died in 1926. You know the name, CMR. 1914, Jay Burwanger was born, Hall of Famer for college football. He was the first Heisman Trophy winner in 1935. Born in uh, Iowa. Passed away in 2002. So there's a couple of... Uh, Little things there for you, and let's do this. We're almost at the end of the show. What did we learn, and what did he miss? Time for the walk-off. All right, make sure uh, you go buy the book on Amazon. It's called The Coach and the Geek by Mark Adams. We thank Mark for joining us to talk about the world of uh, sports and college basketball moving forward. And also, big thanks to Jesse Davis, heading home finally after a long time, a month and a half in the hospital. He'd been in a coma, you know, the big injury, what, 50 days ago or so, and, and, and you know, lost half his liver, 21 pints of blood to save Jesse, and um, bless him and Cassidy and the kids, and he's coming home to Montana. So safe travels home, my friend, and uh, we'll talk to you uh, soon. Tomorrow on the show. Flint Rasmussen will join us. Talk about the PBR getting canceled. And how weird was it last week to work in Georgia with nobody in the stands? We'll also talk to Barry Abrams, ESPN horse racing analyst, as we wrap up the week on a Friday. Stay safe, wash your hands, and hang out with your family. 
Jason Walker Show. We'll see you tomorrow at 4. Have yourself a great Thursday. The Jason Walker Show is produced by the Jason Walker Media Company. Any reuse, rebroadcast, or retransmission without the express written consent of the Jason Walker Show is strictly prohibited. Just listen, watch, and enjoy.